What if not going for your dream was actually the selfish thing? What if you doing possibly what you've been doing, holding back, looking around, seeing who is your dream going to impact, waiting for the right time, waiting for all uh, the ducks to line up or getting all the things done that you need to get done. What if all of those actions were actually the selfish actions? My name is Felicia Cersei, your Dream Life Activator. It is my joy to be your partner in believing. And in this life, I want to help you understand how not going for your dream is actually really selfish. And I'm going to encourage you to stick around because I have an amazing uh, invitation for you um, that I want you to get all this good juiciness and then I will share an invitation for you to really help you catapult uh, 2021, make it the best year ever. So in order to, you know, it's that time of year. I realize that we're on the front end of the Christmas holidays for those that celebrate this tradition. And 2021 may be uh, a little bit out there in terms of really thinking about it. But here's the thing I want you to understand as you really begin to entertain uh, building out your next year, building out your next several years. You have an amazing dream. You're pouring all of your energy into building a business in order to fulfill that dream. And if you're like so many clients and people that I've worked with, thousands of people around the world, you probably have a voice going on in your head. You know, drop some comments in the comment section. If you have a voice going on in your head that says, you know, this is actually pretty selfish. Maybe I should water it down. I'm not being realistic. And, and the reason you're not being realistic is because, you know, it, it just, I have too much on my plate. I have too many people counting on me. I have too much responsibility. This is really going to detract from the things that I'm supposed to be doing. And there's this part in so many of us, you know, this is one that I've had to go after that gets worried about disappointing people or leaving people behind or abdicating your responsibilities. And you've been trained to put other people first. I mean, especially as women, that's, that's what we've been taught to do is to put other people first. And so you back burner your dream, you wait for the right time, you wait for the people around you to get settled or get taken care of or have everything that they need. And in the meantime, tick, 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 the minutes are going by. You will never get those minutes back again, never in all of eternity. And that's one less day you have putting energy into the thing that matters most to you. Now, I'm not saying that the people that you love don't matter. Of course they do. But you are not meant to love them at your expense. If you are loving people at your expense, then it's, it's not the highest service for everybody or for anybody um, that uh, everybody will suffer in some way, shape, or form. So let me share with you five top reasons why not going for your dream is actually selfish. And so if this is resonating with you, I invite you to put some thumbs up or hearts or comments in the comment section and share how this is resonating with you as you hear yourself and what it is that I'm saying. So there, I had a client, Shelby, who was in such a similar boat that she had a, an amazing dream. She had a dream of uh, building out a business, um, helping people with their health. And she wanted to move. She wanted to move someplace that was more conducive to her business and more life-giving. But she had parents that she was taking care of that were close by. She had a son in school. She had a husband who had a good job um, that, you know, she was deeply um, embedded in uh, her community and doing work. And she had a job that they were counting on for income. And so every time she went to consider her dream, all of these reasons just started stacking up around why she shouldn't really go for it. Now, here's the torturous thing, right? And, and, and you know, put some comments if you can relate to this. The torturous thing is that you don't stop your 
your dream all together. You don't not go for it, but you don't go for it with the intensity or the energy that deep down you know is required to really move your initiative forward, that you hold back out of fear of how it's going to impact the other people around you, how you're going to abdicate your responsibility. And all of those things that I said, you know, and deep down that fear, just that paralyzing fear of disappointing people, that if you do this, you're going to disappoint people. So, uh, uh, Shelby, you know, thank God, she, her dream was too big to set aside, too big to put down, and she um, uh, became willing to get some help. And so, one of the things that we did was that we got super clear around how her dream was not selfish, but that it was actually the most loving thing that she could do. So right now, I just want you to consider that your dream is actually the most loving thing that you could do. All right, so let's look at the top five reasons why going for your dream is actually the selfless act. Not going for your dream is the selfish act. So let me ground this in a foundation. And if you watch my lives at all, you uh, will hear me say this over and over and over again. Number one, this is not the, the a reason. This is just the foundation. We're laying a foundation here. So first thing I want you to realize is that you are this unlimited being with just crazy unlimited capacity to create. It is absolutely breathtaking, the power that you wield at your fingertips. We have the capacity to create anything that we can think of. You have the capacity to create anything that you can think of. That dream for your business that you're either uh, building or getting started or maybe have um, built out in a really good, decent way, but now there's more that's calling to you. That dream is how life is waking you up to more of your capacity. And I love that quantum physics is proving what spiritual masters have talked about the ages. Your capacity, what is that capacity? It's your thinking capacity. I love, like I just said, that quantum physics is now proving what spiritual masters have talked about the ages. With that, what you predominantly mentally rehearse and the faculty of your imagination in charge with your emotions it has an energy to it. And this energy is then, it's a vibration, a frequency. It is now vibrating into this field around us where there are waves of energy hanging out in superposition. That energy then, in some fantastical way, organizes according to your predominant thought and feeling and creates your result. It's the basic explanation of the law of attraction, which is actually a secondary law to the law of vibration. Now, imagine if you really got that. Imagine if you really understood just how powerful you were, how that would fundamentally change the way you do things. Shelby really, now Shelby had a, a basic understanding of this. This wasn't new information for her. Just like I would imagine, this is not new information for you. But so often there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect between under, having a cursory knowledge of this and then being able to consistently apply it where you actually see it in your tangible results. So first thing that Shelby had to do was own the fact that her dream was actually the way that life was wanting her to wake up to more of her magnificence. So right now, I want you to really own that this dream, that there's a part of you that's saying, oh my God, I'm being so selfish, that that dream is actually the universe, it's life asking you to wake up to more of your amazingness, that you have to have something to apply that amazingness to. 
You have to have something to um, um, have a reason to develop more of your capability, more of your brilliance, uh, more of your understanding of how these laws work. So, number one reason why your dream, not going for your dream, is selfish. Number one reason, understand, it's not your dream. It's not your dream. That dream that's percolating, that dream that's pulsating in and through you, that's not your dream. That is life itself. That's the universe itself seeking a richer, freer, fuller expression through you and by means of you. If we truly are unlimited in our capacity to create, if you truly have unlimited capabilities to create anything that you can dream up, anything that you can imagine, then the purpose of your dream is to wake you up to more of that magnificence. That is the reason for your dream. If that is the case then, then the way that the universe wakes you up to more of your magnificence, and if the reason for your dream is to wake you up to more of your magnificence, then it stands to reason that that dream, it's not your dream. That dream is not your dream. That's life dreaming through you. That's life wanting to express more through you and by means of you. So that's life saying, hey, here's a dream that will absolutely light you up in any, every way, shape, or form. Say yes to this dream so you can say yes to more of what is longing to express through you. So top reason, number one reason why not going for your dream is selfish, it's not your dream. Whatever it is, bring it to mind right now. Bring that um, uh, goal or initiative or the thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night because you want it so much. Bring it to mind right now. Really see it in your mind's eye. Really let yourself play in the playground of your imagination and understand that dream, you're not dreaming that up. It's not you going to the universe saying, oh, I really want this. This is the universe coming to you and saying, hey, this is how we want to live more through you. This is how life wants to live more through you. And this is the way that life wants to wake you up to more of the amazingness that you are. So that dream, it's not your dream. And so you are effectively saying, no, nope, don't want it. When you say no to your dream, it is your way of saying no to life. It's your way of saying no to the universe. It's the universe wanting you to be the conduit by which this dream expresses. And so when you say no, it is actually a selfish act. It is actually a selfish act when you say no to your dream because what you're saying no to is the universe. The universe tapped you. The universe didn't tap the person next to you. The universe tapped you and said, you're the one to bring this brilliant idea into form. You're the one with the unique characteristics and qualities and capabilities. It's you, only you can bring this amazing dream, this amazing initiative forward. So when you say no to the universe, no to your dream, you're saying no to the universe. You're saying no to life. So number one reason why not going for your dream is selfish is because you're saying no to the universe wanting you to bring this forward. All right. So number two, you ignore your dream. You stifle your gift. Remember, the purpose of your dream is to help you wake up to more of your amazingness, more of your magnificence. It's breathtaking how powerful you are. And your dream is wanting to develop more of who you are, more of your gifts, more of your capabilities. We don't do that hanging out in the status quo. 
We don't do that um, doing the, what we've always done. The only way you are going to increase and grow your gifts and capabilities is if you go beyond anything that you've ever known for yourself. Now, here's the thing about your gifts and capabilities. The more developed you are in your gifts and capabilities, the more you have to bring the people around you. The more of you you are bringing to the people around you. If you are holding back on your dream, you're actually holding back on the even more amazingness that is you, that is seeking expression, which means you are actually holding out on the people around you. I watched Shelby as she kept, as she got really clear about what was it that she would really love and she made a decision for it and she went for it. Boy, howdy, did she go for it. And I watched her grow in her leadership and her confidence and her ability to speak up. And as a result of that, it, it just wasn't something good for her. But she built out this amazing business. What she actually did um, was that she was actually able to go into an agency and design her position and basically name her salary as they moved to an area that they absolutely love. But she never would have done that if she didn't say yes and stare down the voice that said she was being selfish. And as a result, I watched this amazing woman build, build her confidence, build her poise, build her ability to negotiate uh, a contract, build her ability to speak up in her relationships in the way that she would acquiesce, that she would step aside and let other people, other people's needs be more important. And because she did that, she became such a powerful force in her relationships. So what are the skills and capabilities that your world wants you to develop as you say yes to your dream that you will then bring to the people around you that you will then be able to show up even more powerfully and and uh bring even more of you you know i watched shelby get clear about what was important to her what was really hers to do so when she did pour into those activities that were hers she brought her she brought everything to the uh, to the table she brought it all to the table if you're doing things out of fear of if you're not doing things out of being selfish fear of being selfish you're withholding parts of you and you're definitely withholding parts of um, uh, key pieces of your gifts so a main reason why not going for your dream is selfish is that you're not you're not discovering who you really are and you're not bringing your full self you're not growing your gifts and sharing those gifts with the people around you the people that you love all right so number three you're happier when you are living your dream you're happier you're just more fun to be around and when you're happier the people around you are happier Again, they're getting your best self. You know, when we decide not to do something out of fear of disappointing the people around us or because we think we need to sacrifice or it's gonna, we're um, going to be asking too much of a sacrifice of the people around us, you hold a piece of yourself back. There's resentment. There's um, uh, discouragement. You, you can't help but hold a piece of yourself back. And when you hold a piece of yourself back, the people that you love, they're not getting your full self. They're not getting all of you. They're certainly not getting the best of you. It's like they're getting the leftovers. They're getting the, um, uh, the obligatory part of you. And I'm not saying that it's all like this, but you can tell when, you, when you're holding back out of fear of how it's going to impact others, you hold a piece of yourself back. There's a, like the dimmer switch goes down a little bit and a little more life goes out of you. And so you may be showing up and you may be um, doing the things that you think you're supposed to be doing and you may actually be 
doing that pretty decently. But you're not at your happiest. And if you're not at your happiest, people aren't getting the best of you. People aren't getting all of you. They're getting a piece of you. And the best of you is hidden away. And that, my amazing friend, is a remarkable disservice. It's crazy what a disservice doing that is to the people that you love. So a top reason for not, for uh, um, it actually being selfish when you don't go for your dream is that you hold the best of you back. The people that you love don't get the best of you. And, and they may not be able to really know what's going on, but deep down, they can feel that. You can feel that. You're not at your happiest. And when you're not at your happiest, you're not uh, bringing um, your, happy, your happy self, your happiest self to the people around you. So you have to bring your best self. And in order to bring your best self, you gotta be living your dream. All right, so that's reason number three. Number one, your dream is not yours. Number two, you ignore your dream, you stifle your gifts, you stifle your growth. And number three, uh, one of the top reasons why not going for your dream is selfish is that you hold a part of yourself back, that you are not your happiest. And when you're not your happiest, you can't bring um, uh, your best self to the people around you. All right, number four, top reason why not going for your dream is selfish is that um, when you do what's not yours to do, you're actually doing the people around you a disservice. When we are not doing what's ours to do, because we're doing what's not necessarily ours to do, we are effectively holding the people around us back as well. We're doing what's called over-functioning. When you do too much for somebody else or you show up beyond what um, is, is most empowering, you actually are doing them a disservice that you're, you're uh, holding back the opportunity for them to discover elements about themselves. That when you say yes to what brings you most alive, so Shelby, she had to invite her family into really discovering elements about them. Her, her child and her husband had to learn how to communicate in a whole new way because she was no longer running interference between the two of them. She was putting her energy into building out a dream. So when you think about what is it, um, what, where are you showing up in ways that are not for you to show up, and you shift that focus and pour it in your dream, now you're inviting the people that you love, you're inviting the people around you to discover elements about themselves that they're not going to discover if you're running interference, if you're buffering them or um, doing things for them that they could do for themselves. All right, so reasons why not going for your dream is selfish. Understand that's not your dream, that the universe is uh, dream dreaming through you. Number two, if you don't go for your dream, you're actually stifling the growth of your gift because the purpose of your dream is to grow you into an even greater version of yourself. Number three, um, you're happy when you are living your dream. Uh, and so you're able to bring that best self, that happier self to the people around you. Number four, when you're not going for your dream out of fear of abdicating responsibility or don't want to disappoint others or cause them to sacrifice, you're usually doing something that is not yours to do and you're stifling the people around you. And number five, the reason why not going for your dream is selfish is because when you say yes to something, that is more expansive than anything you've ever known for yourself before, you're actually inspiring others around you. You're showing others around you what's possible. You're helping them see, wow, if you can do it, I can do it. You know, when I uh, 
built my business and I'm continuing to build my business, every leap I take, it's a leap of confirmation for the people around me to see that they can do it too. That when I hit my first half a million and, um, you know, and building my team and expanding my reach, the people coming up after me, the people that I have the honor of working with me, they're able to see I can do that. That if Felicia, from her background, and it's a whole longer story that I'll share here in a second, how you can hear that longer story. Felicia, if Felicia can do it, I can do it. If you can do it, others can do it. Your dream is the way that you inspire people. Your dream is the way that you give other people permission and to help them see, wow, I can do this too. All right, so five reasons why not going for your dream is selfish. Number one, it's not your dream. It's the universe dreaming through you. Number two, it is the way you grow more of who you are and what you're capable of. Number three, you are um, uh, happier with your dream and so you're bringing more of your best self. Number four, when you are going for your dream, you're inviting the people around you to discover more of who they are because you're not jumping and doing things that are not yours to do. And number five, it's the way you inspire. When you can do it, other people can do it. All right, so let me share my gift. December 29th, 930 to 1230, I am offering a free masterclass, three keys to creating your best year ever in 2021. I'm going to walk you through my dream life activation formula, help you understand practically and, and granularly these laws of how to consistently use universal laws, the law of attraction to create what you would love and as you are growing. Help you get clear about what is it that you would really love for 2021. Build a bigger believing in your ability to do that. Ground it in some action steps of we've got time and to really help you open up and allow so much more good into your life. We have to literally train ourselves to allow a greater degree of abundance in our life. December 29th, 930 to 1230 Pacific Standard Time over Zoom, we're going to dig deep into what does it take to take this amazing dream in your imagination and actually have it in your life. I've done this with thousands of people. I have dedicated over 30 years to learning and honing this myself as I have built out an amazing life for myself. And I want to help you. I want to help you create your best year ever. The link to register is up in the description. Um, it's uh, FeliciaCircy.com forward slash dream life. The only thing I ask is that you make a charitable contribution to a cause of your choice. So join me December 29th. 9 30 to 12 30. Let's get you going. Let's get you living the dream that you are created to live so you can uh, live from your highest place of contribution, knowing that it is truly a selfless act. All right, it is my joy to be your partner in believing. My name is Felicia Searcy. Your dream is my passion. And I look forward to seeing you on the 29th, 930 to 1230 Pacific Standard Time, FeliciaCircy.com forward slash Dream Life. See you then. Mwah. God bless.